I've been talking about significant figures. We've been cutting things off. So it's time to talk about what significant figures are all about. In a measurement, you want to, of course, have the highest precision, highest accuracy possible. But a question comes around in all measurements. For example, if you have water in a graduated cylinder, what is that number? What is that measurement? Now, first of all, notice how there's a little bit of a curve. That curve on the water is called a meniscus. And people will usually try to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. And if you look on the left side, 15 is the big one, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I think we would all agree that the bottom of that curved meniscus is between 17 and 18. But how many digits do we call it? Do we call it just 17? Do we round up to 18? Do we call it 17.5? Do we call it 17.4876? I mean, what do you call it, right? And the important thing here, all measurements, whether they're made by a computer or a human, have uncertainty. There's going to be some known digits. So for example, 17, that thing is definitely known, but there's also going to be a doubtful digit. What's that next value listed? And this is where significant figures really pops in. It tries to make all measurements made by scientists uh, standardized. So it will have consistent measurements. We won't go crazy and stuff. The calculator is going to give you lots and lots of numbers, but not all of them are significant. And this is probably the most important of all of the topics we've talked about in this chapter so far. Significant figures is the cornerstone of all experimental science and chemistry is just chock full of experimental science. So you've got to know your sig fig system. Um, as the teacher, I take off more points for sig fig errors than anything else. So if you spend the time in this chapter learning significant figures, you're going to be good throughout the whole class. So I can't tell you enough how important this section is. So let's look at the rules for what scientists would use to make this measurement. In a number, you're always going to have some known values, which are people feel confident, but there's also going to be one digit, which is estimated. And they call this estimated digit the doubtful digit. And if you've ever seen a journal article, it'll say some number plus or minus some other number. The plus or minus is usually the doubtful digit. It's the one that's uncertain. And so if you looked at a number, maybe you'd call it 17.4. But if I looked at it, it might be 17.5. Or if someone else looked at it, maybe they call it 17.3. There's a plus or minus in that last number. And that's what the doubtful digit is all about. So every number is going to have some known values plus one doubtful digit. And the doubtful digit is just the last number. The total number of digits is called the number of significant figures. And significant figures is obviously abbreviated sig figs because that's a lot of syllables and stuff. But though it's important too. So we need to know in any number how many significant figures there are and which one is the doubtful digit. Here's some examples. 65.07. Okay, the last digit is the doubtful. So the 7 here is the doubtful digit. And 65.07 has four significant figures. The 6, the 5, the 0, and the 7. Those are all significant. Even the doubtful digit counts as a sig fig. So four sig figs, 7 is the doubtful digit. The 7 is the hundredths position, if you remember from math. <clears throat> Here's another number. 54.70318 has seven digits, seven sig figs, all right? And the eight, that last position, that's the doubtful digit. So it goes tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. That's the hundred thousandths position. That's the doubtful digit. But all those numbers are the number of sig figs. And you're probably seeing here that the more sig figs you have, it's going to be better as a chemist because we're so obsessed with these kind of things. So just get ready. 
The zeros are troublesome though, because sometimes zeros count in a sig fig and sometimes they don't. If the zero is in the middle of non-zeros, it counts. So like earlier we saw a number with a zero in the middle and that counted as a sig fig. So 69.08 would be four sig figs, the eight is the doubtful digit. If the zeros though are at the beginning, then they don't usually count as they're not significant. They're called placeholders. So like 0 .0089, we wanna know where the eight and the nine is on the number line, all right? This number 0 .0089 is not 89 and it's not 8.9, it's 0 .0089. So that number has only two significant figures. If you know about scientific notation, you could write 0 .0089 as 8.9 times 10 to the minus 3. Notice that all of those zeros go away in scientific notation. That's another way to tell there's only two sig figs in that number, and the 9 is the doubtful digit. At the end of the number and after a decimal point, those zeros count. So for example, 2.50, three sig figs, the zero is the doubtful digit. 25.00, the last zero is the doubtful digit, that's four sig figs. I like to think about this as chemists are lazy. We won't include those zeros unless there's a meaning, because we could write it 2.5 and 25 and that'd be fine. But we decided to include it, that's because those are significant figures. So the zero after the decimal and after a non-zero, those count. If the zeros though are before a decimal and after a non-zero number, then you have to be a little careful, all right? Most of the time, they're only significant if there's a decimal placeholder or a period. So let's look at these two numbers, 1500 with no dot, 1500 with a dot. 1500 with no doubt, with no dot, the first one, we would assume has only two sig figs. We could write that 1.5 times 10 to the third and the zeros go away. On the other hand, 1500 with a dot means that the zeros are significant. So 1500 with a dot would be four sig figs and we would write that 1.500 times 10 to the third. I used a dot earlier with the Kelvin temperature. I think it was 310 Kelvin or whatever. I wanted that zero to be significant, so I put a dot next to it. Those dots are important in chemistry. They are not accidents, all right? They will be meaningful. So 1500 without a dot, two sig figs. 1500 with a dot, four sig figs. If you had a number 1500 that you wanted to have three sig figs, I would write it in scientific notation, 1.50 times 10 to the third. Finally, there are some definitions or exact conversions which have what's considered to be infinite sig figs. So for example, 60 seconds per one minute, that is never gonna change. <clears throat> you're always gonna have 60 seconds in a minute, all right? You're never gonna have anything different. So 60 and one both look like one sig fig numbers. We don't wanna have those limit our sig figs. So those are considered definitions and they don't affect your sig figs. Also 10 millimeters per one centimeter. Those look like one sig fig numbers, but they aren't. They're exact conversions. There'll always be that case. A thousand meters in a kilometer, a um, thousand milligrams in a gram. Those would be other types of definitions where we don't worry about the sig figs. Density, on the other hand, is something that you need to measure mass and volume. Those are not infinite. Those would be significant figure kind of values, and we'll talk about that later. Very important to practice, all right? In the textbook and in the companion, there are practice sample quizzes, examples, and stuff like that. I highly recommend you go through these and stuff to learn them. Sig figs, like I said, super important, and you've gotta know how many sig figs there are and when, when they count and stuff like that. The zeros are the troublesome ones. The other ones are pretty chill. Here's some numbers. Let's see uh, here how many of them do they have the same number of significant figures. All right, so the top one, 1,000 with a dot. Notice the dot. That means those zeros count for sig figs. 
Second one, 9.730, <clears throat> zero at the end and also past the decimal. That definitely counts. That's the chemist or lazy thing. We wouldn't write that zero unless there was a meaning for it. So that one counts or has four sig figs. The next one, 0 0.004270. So the initial zeros are just placeholders. But the last ones, <clears throat> the zero at the end, we wouldn't write that unless we needed it. You could write that number as 4.270 times 10 to the minus third. That is four sig figs. So those don't count in terms of sig figs, but those last four do, four sig figs. And this last one, <clears throat> zeros at the end, no dot, four non-zero values, four sig figs, true. They all have the same number of significant figures. They all have four sig figs. Scientific notation is something that I'm hoping you've heard of before, but if you haven't, it's a really easy thing to do. Chemistry has numbers that are super big when it comes to like number of water molecules in, in a teaspoon or something like that. But we also have numbers that are super small when it comes to like the distance between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms in the water molecule. And if you write, if you use scientific notation, you can easily express these numbers. Do not make your instructor count your zeros. All right, I will be totally mad and stuff like that because you don't have to. If the number is like larger than a thousand or smaller than 0 0.001, you had better use scientific notation. So let's look at some examples of how this works. <clears throat> scientific notation is always the number between one and 10 times 10 raised to a power. And 215, if you want to write that in scientific notation, uh, as a number between one and 10, it would be 2.15 times 10. If you move the decimal to the left, you make it a positive exponent. So we moved it 2 to the left. That's where the 10 to the second part comes in. So 215 would be 2.15 times 10 to the second. Um, if you see a number with a negative exponent, that doesn't mean it's a negative number. It just means it's a really small number. So 1.56 times 10 to the minus 8, the negative 8 means that we had to move that over quite a few zeros, all right? So if you start with 1.56 and you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 decimals to the left, or you'd have 7 zeros and the 1 now is a number, that's how you would do this kind of thing. All right. Scientific notation is pretty easy to use, but it's super important. And if you have a modern calculator, you must know how to go from regular format to scientific notation and back and forth, because we're going to use numbers that are super big and super small. So spend some time finding on your calculator how to convert to scientific notation, and also how to go from scientific notation back to the regular. Um, the calculators usually have an EE button for powers of 10, but there's also some way, like a mode usually, and it'll say science or normal or something like that. If you can't figure out how your calculator can do this, uh, let me know. Um, most of the science calculators will have this on there, but if you don't see it, please contact me. Calculators, when you do a calculation, will create just incredible numbers of digits sometimes. But in chemistry, we only want to use the sig figs in our answer. And we're going to have to round these large calculator numbers off to something that's manageable. And we've already seen that in a lot of the examples in this chapter. I, I rounded up some of the things and stuff because of these sig fig rules. So let's look at how you round numbers with significant figures, especially when it comes to problems with chemistry. In chemistry, most of the time we're going to be using sig figs with problems involving multiplying and dividing. And the answer cannot have more significant figures than the original numbers. So let's say that you um, take your car out and you drive 278 miles and you figure out that you use 11.70 gallons of gas, it's assuming it's gas powered, uh, to make this happen. All right. Well, mathematically, you throw this in your calculator, it comes out to be 23.76068, blah, blah, blah. I get bored after writing too many numbers. When it comes to scientific, uh, to significant figures, you can't express the number uh, in any more than the smallest sig fig. So if you look at the numbers in, that went into this calculation, 278 
three sig figs and 11.70 four sig figs all right the final answer has to have the smaller number of sig figs so because this one had only three our answer is going to only have three sig figs as well. So 23.76068 becomes 23.8. Notice here that we rounded up the 7 to 8. If the first number you drop is between 5 and 9, you round up. So 23.76 to three sig figs, 23.8. So when you multiply and divide, the smaller number of significant figures is what you use in the final answer. This is why chemists are always fighting for significant figures, because you want them as you calculate things and stuff like that. So multiplying and dividing, not too bad. The same process would have been worked if we would have multiplied those numbers together. <clears throat> Adding and subtracting is a little bit different, and this is where the doubtful digit pops in, and the answer has to be rounded to the larger doubtful digit. So here's an example of taking 3.18 liters and we're adding 0 0.01315 liters to it, okay? Now, mathematically, it comes out to be 3.19315, all right? No big deal, not hard math to do. However, in the 3.18, the doubtful digit was the 8 or the hundredths spot, and we really don't know what those other numbers are to the right of it. All right, maybe they're all zeros, but that's not very likely. They could be something else. Now, the second measurement, which was smaller, we knew more digits. It went out to the hundredth thousandth of a number, all right? And that's really cool. <clears throat> but when you're adding them together, we really don't have any confidence in those three numbers because we don't know what went into them. So what chemists do is they cut it off at the largest doubtful digit. 3.18 stops at the eight and that's where this number stops as well. So 3.18 plus that 0 0.01 blah 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 becomes 3.19 liters. We're cutting it off at the larger doubtful digit. 3.19, we're cutting off the 315, and we're making this just 3.19. So adding and subtracting is a little strange. You want to use the larger doubtful digit to cut off your answers for them. So even though in that second number, 0 0.01315, we had all kinds of significant figures, we're going to cut it off at the hundredth spot to 3.19. Work a little bit on adding and subtracting in sig fig. Sometimes people um, get a little stuck on it. It's not hard, you just need a little practice. Rounding up, which I already mentioned earlier, is something you may have to do. <clears throat> if the first digit that you're going to remove is between 0 and 4, you just drop it and leave the number alone. But like we saw in the multiplying dividing, if the first digit you drop is between 5 and 9, round it up. So 2.4271 would become 2.4 when you round it to two sig figs because the first digit you drop is the 2. 2 is between 0 and 4, so you just leave the 2.4 alone. On the other hand, 2.5816 becomes 4.6 if you're going to round it. You're going to cut it off after the 5. The first digit that you drop is an 8. That's between 5 and 9. So 4.5 becomes 4.6. Now the textbook says something in there about even rounding with a 5. Don't just ignore that. That's just silly. All right. I, I've never, I don't know what they're talking about. You just want to use <coughs> uh, the simple way and stuff 0 to 4 leave it alone, five to nine, round up, pretty chill. Let's round this number up to three significant figures. Now, first we have to see where the sig figs start, all right? And remember that zeros at the beginning usually don't count in terms of sig figs. So the first digit to count is this three right there. So three sig figs, 0 0.00303, that would be three sig figs and then we'll cut this part off. And it might be tempting to say, oh yeah, 0 0.00303, but 
the first number drop is 5, and 5 is between 5 and 9. So 0 0.00303, we're going to round up by one unit, that's going to be 0 0.00304. 5 was the first digit drop, it's between 5 and 9, so 0 0.00303 becomes 0 0.00304.